Now, the way that we architect our applications from the ground up is incredibly important when you're building out production applications that you intend to support for a considerable amount of time into the future. Now, the right architecture pattern could mean the difference between you building an application that is incredibly easy to support, maintain, even extend into the future, and one that's just a nightmare that all developers within your company hate touching for fear of breaking sensitive business logic or bringing down parts of your platform. Now, the way we're going to architect our application is we're going to define a series of layers. Now, these layers are going to look something like this. We're going to have the first layer, which is going to be the HTTP layer. We're then going to have a second layer, which is going to be the service layer. And we're going to have a third layer, which is going to be the repository layer. Now, how this is going to work is whenever we get a HTTP request coming into our service, it will come in from here. The HTTP layer is going to be responsible for everything at the transport level. So it's going to be responsible for validating the incoming request. It's then going to be responsible for marshalling that request into an object or a struct that our business layer or our service layer can interact with or can handle and manage. Now, this HTTP layer of our application is not going to be responsible for any business logic within our application. It is going to be purely responsible for receiving incoming requests and ensuring that we're sending back the appropriate HTTP status codes and response bodies back to whatever client has called this service. Moving on to the service layer. Now, the service layer is going to be responsible for all of our business logic. Now, this service layer is responsible for only the business logic within our application. And by business logic, I mean things like you know, validating that the user has the right level of access to post a comment, validating that, you know, if we're deleting a comment, for example, that we're not allowing any user to delete anybody's comment. We're doing a wee bit of validation to ensure that the user ID for the incoming request and the user ID of the comment they want to delete is the same. Basically things like that. Now, if the business layer needs to retrieve information or interact with a store of some kind, it will then delegate this responsibility to a repository layer. Now, this repository layer is going to be responsible for talking to the database. In this example, it's going to be a Postgres database. So all of the code for interacting with the database will happen within this repository layer, and all of the results will then be marshaled back into a response that the service layer can handle, and then continue to process. Now, this is just a simple example that has three layers and doesn't do any communication with any downparty systems or APIs. However, we can easily extend this approach to interact with APIs in a way and still maintain our decoupled approach. Now, in this case, if we wanted to talk to a third party API, what we would do is we would create a client or within the client layer, we would then have an interface within our service layer, and this client would then have to implement that interface and then be passed in as a dependency to the service layer. And this allows us to do things like mocking the results that we get back from any third party APIs. Now, I will be showing you what I mean by this in more detail when we get to the point at which we're implementing the service layer. So if this is a little bit complex, don't worry about it. Uh, we will cover it in more detail. Cool. So we've covered at a high level the architecture approach that we're going to be taking for this application. Now, this is just a personal preference. This is something that I've developed over time and I've used in several production services. Now, if you have any comments or any disagreements or any you know, alternative opinions in terms of how we should architect this application, I'd love to hear them. So please leave them in the comment section down below. It's always good to ensure that when you are designing an, an application that you are taking a considered approach for your specific domain space or problem domain, I should say. Now, depending on your problem domain, this architecture approach might not be suitable. So just bear that in mind. This isn't a silver bullet. This is just one of the main architecture patterns that I tend to use across 
all of the different companies I've been at and all of the services that I built out myself.